All right, next up we have a guest speaker who came in all the way from Greer. She's a, uh, an activist, she is dynamic, she is an executive producer of a documentary that's coming up called Downing of a Flag. And what I would like to do is show a short video clip of this documentary and then we'll let Candy speak on it. Most white people came to this country of their own free will in search of liberty. Most black people came to this country against their will and were enslaved upon arrival. After the Civil War, in the South, they put up monuments to memorialize their ancestors, to feel that what those people had done was worthy. We have to go back and judge them by the time in which they lived. We have monuments to people who committed treason. That flag went on top of the state house at that time and it was supposed to be up there for one year. General Lee told them, furl the flag and put it away. You're talking about 1961, just months after the Friendship Nine, which is when African Americans went to sit at a segregated lunch counter. It is an honor of the 64,000 men from South Carolina who served this state, and their memory should not be forgotten. Nine one one. What's the address of the emergency? Please, Emmanuel Church is playing people shot down here. Please send somebody right away. To even comprehend what he did and see. This young man, Dylan Roof, was a worshiper of that flag. I refuse to pledge allegiance to that flag. Most things in this state relate back to the Confederate flag. Every kid in the South got a rebel flag. That flag is a strong symbol. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we will see the Confederate flag come down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Candy Fletcher. Is she that Yes. Can you hear me? Ooh, I sound loud. I'm Candy Fletcher. I'm one of the producers of the film. You probably don't know who I am, but you may know Representative Terry Alexander from Florence. He's one of the other producers. And Dwayne Cooper from Columbia um, is one of the other producers. We have partnered with SCETV and a company out of Charlotte called Susie Films. This is a very collaborative effort. We're very fortunate, and one of the reasons we got so many people that were willing to be involved with this is because I'm political, Terry's political, and um, Dwayne is political. Because not everybody wants to talk to you about these things. We're very fortunate that we had SCETV because they had a, a lot of um, archival footage. We'll have Nikki Haley in the film, but she refused to talk to us. Um, but we'll still use her because we have arch um, archi archival footage. Oh, I'm sorry. Can y'all hear me now? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, this film is really very important to us. It's important to the state. And what SCETV has done, it will be in every PBS station in the entire country and their affili international affiliates. It will be streamed on Amazon Prime and maybe Hulu, but this will have this film will actually have um, people that will see it and not just people that hear about it. We also every school in this state will be allowed to use this film in some way, shape, or form. Um, and the, because this is not, this film is not what I was taught when I was in school. And I'm actually from South Carolina. I grew up here in Darlington County. Anyway, I think now I'm supposed to ask questions. I answer questions. I can't ask questions. Okay. Yeah, so the very first question, that was mine as well. Uh, where and when can they see this? Okay, you can see it. Okay, you can see the first hour on um, July 22nd on PBS, or we call it here SCETV. The second hour will be the 29th 
on um, SCETV, and they'll be 9 o'clock at night. It's a two-hour doc, and um, SCETV has divided into two nights. Will it be available online as well? Afterwards? It will be It will be available from Amazon Prime. Okay. And maybe Hulu. We're not... I, I, we're not real sure, but I think it's going to be available, and I heard this date last night in a meeting, and this could change, available on Amazon on the 12th, but I'm really not sure. We will make sure to put links to this in our newsletter so everybody can know where and when to watch. So thank you. Any other questions? Actually, I got another question. Oh, go right ahead. Well, all of this hoopla about CRT impact so the question was, the controversy, the invented controversy around critical race theory, do you think that will impact your or this program from being shown in schools throughout the state? Well, critical race theory, and I'm not an expert on any of this, is actually only taught in the law school. It's not taught in any other schools in the state. And this is really a, a legal term and a legal device. But what people, I think, really ought to understand, that in 1850, 50% of the um, GMP, or GDP, excuse me, came out of the state of South Carolina. 50% came out of one state. And why was that? That was because of the rice planters on the coast and basically free labor. So you can talk about critical race theory all you want to, but you start thinking about what really built this country. Yeah, facts are facts. Now, one interesting fact about you is that you were a delegate to the National <laughs> Democratic Convention in 2016. Is that yes, right? Yes, yes. So tell us a little bit about how you got there and how can someone here from Greenwood be at the next convention? <laughs> oh, well. Well, it's really funny because I'm really a political consultant. I lived in Washington for almost 20 years. I worked in many, many states from California, Maryland, Michigan, Pennsylvania, um, Virginia, Florida. And those are the ones just I can remember because it's early in the morning. But I was always involved with politics. That's how I made my living. But I'd never been a delegate. And I wanted to work for and help a woman that was running for office. So I ran for delegate at my county party in Greenville. And I got voted because I told a stupid story. Um, when I ran, I made it up, it was funny. But I, <laughs> I said something because everybody was really serious because this is a serious thing running for President of the United States. So what I told them, I said, look, I lived in Washington for a long time. I want to go to the convention because I'll have a lot of old boyfriends and dates that'll be there, so that's why. <laughs> And they voted for me. I mean, if they'll vote for Donald Trump, they'll vote for him. You know? Any other questions for, for Candy? All right, let's give her a round of applause for this and for the work that she's done. It's an incredible documentary. I cannot wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you so much.